So in this video, we're setting up the PlayStation 4 for the very first time. If you want to see the actual first part of this, check out my last video, which was the actual unboxing of this. Uh, I wanted to go through the entire setup process, but it wanted to download an update, and it took a very long time for that to happen. So I decided, well, I'll just go edit that video, the unboxing, and uh, come back down here and get back to this once that uh, editing is done. So I edited for about an hour and a half and I came back down and the PlayStation 5 was off. So I'm not sure if it downloaded the update and applied it or if it didn't do anything at all. I'm kind of leaning towards that it just kind of went to sleep, but I won't know for sure. I'm not too worried about that because I don't need the update to use the PlayStation 5, at least at this time. And then hopefully if there is an update that I need to download, I can get it at a later time. If you don't care about what happened in the previous video, I'll get you up to speed. I plugged in the DualSense controller, which synced it to the PlayStation 5. I chose my language, I set up the HDR, and I set up my Wi-Fi, and then I went into trying to download the update. So. As you can see here, it says add user. And I have this set up where the, uh, the machine is gonna be talking to me. And I think it's a great idea because it will walk everybody through this process without question, uh, but it does get a little bit tedious at times, so hopefully I can navigate this where it'll be watchable for you. So at this point, it's wanting me to add a user. So it says user one. Um, it's, not a, it's not asking me to sign into my PlayStation network, so... Let's see if we can change this. As you can see, whenever I change anything on here, she's talking, which is great for accessibility. Absolutely great for accessibility. Or like I said, if you have any questions at all, it's going to walk you through this. Uh, for me, it's a little bit difficult when I'm making a video uh, and trying to talk over her at the same time. So I did turn it down a little bit lower uh we're just going to put in my my channel name here and uh go from there now one thing of note that when you have the on-screen keyboard here that is not working on the PlayStation 5, which would work on a PlayStation 4, is to move the, the uh, cursor with the touchpad. Obviously, as you saw, I, when you click on it, you're good. But um, moving around, it's not allowing you to do that. So I don't know if that's going to come in, a, in an update or, or what the deal is, but uh, it's good to know. Done. So we're going to go user. with Tech Harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Button. This should be Press overwritten once I actually, Press you know, select. sign into my PlayStation network. But uh, mm -hmm. let's go through this. Okay, so you can read what's going on there. I kind of edited her part out of it. Uh, but basically, you know, you can just go with the unlimited data collection with confirm and continue, or you can limited go with the limited data. data. I'm going to dive into this and just see what I can choose. Setup is complete. Welcome to your okay. PS5. Well, you can check it at a later date. I thought it was going to walk me through. So your PS5 turned Tech off home. to Astros save power. So... Press cross to select. So I definitely want to turn off the accessibility because it's actually um, going into the system here as well. I thought it was just going to be for the setup and it turned itself on because I did not plug in the controller within a specific amount of time. Uh, not a big deal. Again, like I said, it's great. I think anything that uh, we can do to make things like this accessible to everybody I think it's great uh, it just makes it a little bit difficult to um, when I'm filming a video or if I don't need it so um, what I'm going to do is well let's go over well let's first of all go into the settings your settings settings accessibility accessibility display screen, screen reader. reader screen reader on button Press crossed. Okay, turned it off. Good. 
So you'll notice that the menus look very similar to a PlayStation 4. Uh, I don't have them side by side, obviously, uh, but when you would go into settings on a PlayStation 4, it looks a lot like this. Uh, we can go into the storage here. A lot has been made about the storage that you actually get versus the advertised storage on the box. It is to be expected. If you have purchased a computer, uh, I don't know, since the beginning of computers, you know that uh, what the actual hard drive space, or in this case, the SSD space, is never going to be the amount that, that is usable because you have an operating system on here. So in summary, as you can see there if you read it yourself, basically a PlayStation 4 game can be played off of an external drive. A PlayStation 5 game has to be installed on the SSD. And of course, if you want benefits of that SSD, you're going to need uh, the game installed on the SSD. So um, I'm not going to go into the update. What I want to do, I have several bands on my Wi-Fi. I did want to try a different band on the Wi-Fi to see if that would speed up the update. But uh, before we go into any of that, uh, let's just kind of go through the menus and the, and the system just to get an idea of what the PlayStation 5 experience is all about. Obviously, the background is different. The uh, music is different. So there's an option for a web browser, but from what I understand, there's actually no web browser on the system itself. Spoiler warnings. This is actually something that's cool because uh, on the PlayStation 5, you're going to have this card system. When you're in a game, you can just dump out of the game into the card system and it will tell you what tasks you might uh, want to complete in the game. And uh, it'll give you the ability to have hints uh, video uh, hints uh, or even a walkthrough uh, depending on if you want to see those things. So uh, the ability to set your spoiler level is something that uh, is pretty interesting on the console here. That way you can still get the benefit of those cards and those tips and the things that you might want to still do in a game but not have the game spoiled for you. So um, again, as you can see here, it requires a system update, unfortunately. So um, we're gonna push that to the end again because I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. So let's get out of the settings here. And this here is the uh, PlayStation home screen. So you see up on the top left corner, you have games, then you have media. Let's dip into that here and it says you're not signed in. So a lot of this I might have to revisit. Uh, this is just gonna be a first look here. Uh, your app library is empty because I'm not signed into my PlayStation Network. Uh, so let's back over to games over here. And let's see, we had the settings. This is just my username. Uh, let's go here. You're not signed in. I'll try and sign in, but I might have to do the update first. Actually, let's just give it a try here. So sign in. Okay, it needs the update. So Astro's Playroom is pre-installed on the console here, and I'm really anxious to try that out because I want to see how the controller works. Then you have the Media Gallery, home for all your screenshots and video clips. I'm not really a screenshot kind of guy, but uh, for those of you who, who care about that sort of thing, it's pretty cool. Uh, then, of course, the game library. Obviously, I have nothing... Uh, you know, on there yet. So that is the home screen that is interesting. So uh, if I have a game here, I can go down and play. And typically, if you would push down on the controller on the PlayStation 4 when you were on the home screen in a game, uh, it would bring a little bit further information. Maybe you have to uh, be signed in. So it looks like it is just some basic stuff going on here until I'm able to actually sign in. So we're going to bite the bullet and try and do the update here. Um, let's see. Okay, now it's actually working. <laughs> Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Maybe it needed to reboot and that was the thing. So this update is actually not very long at all.
All right. So everything's updated. It did uh, restart a couple of times and uh, it downloaded and then installed and restarted a couple of times. So uh, let's see what's changed here. So the, let me turn the controller back on here because it shut off. Wireless controller device software. So definitely have to update the software here. Make sure I'm up to date because I want to make sure I have the most up-to-date experience when I play Astro's Playroom. Okay, I'm connected. I'm just going to hit update now. I had a similar situation. Long story short, I bought an Xbox Series controller so I could play games on my PC with the most updated Xbox controller. And I've yet to iron out all the kinks on that, even though I did a firmware update. Okay, so it looks like everything's good. It's charging the controller, which I really don't care about, uh, but I assume that everything is done with the controller. So I can detach it, but uh, okay. It looks like we have a different wallpaper now on the home screen. Okay, so next on the agenda is to sign in to my PlayStation Network account. So let's go over to, okay, it looks like a search option is new on here. So let's hit that and you can search all, you can search games, you can search media, you can search players. So let's uh, sign into my PlayStation Network from here. So I mentioned before that uh, with the PlayStation 4 you could move the cursor with the touchpad, but you couldn't with the DualSense. Well, that has changed with the updates. So as you can see, I'm moving the touchpad and it's moving the cursor, which makes things, which makes selecting things a lot easier on the on-screen keyboard. Okay, so it looks like my privacy settings are not uh, transferring over from my PlayStation 4 account. Uh, maybe there's some additions. I really don't dive into this too much, so I don't know if there are any changes, but uh, adjust privacy settings by choosing a profile. So uh, choose a privacy profile that fits how you would like to play online. So let's see, let's just review my current settings. So I made a couple of changes on my privacy settings. Um, I really don't get into, you know, I will accept a friend request if you, my, my, my gamer tag or whatever they call it on PlayStation is, is uh, Tech Harvest. So if you want to uh, friend me there, I'll accept all friend requ requests. I don't really uh, play multiplayer games though, so. Secure your account. You'll stay signed into the PlayStation Network on this PlayStation 5 unless you sign out from settings. Two-step verification. Protect your account with an extra layer of security. After you enter your password, we'll send you a verification code that you enter on your console. So you can do it via text message or Authenticator app. So I'll do text message and I'll put my mobile number in here. So I set up the two-factor authentication. Up next, we have family on PlayStation. Set up a family to tailor your children's experience controls. Uh, I really don't care to do that. Uh, download media apps. So I probably will use none of these because I have a smart television set that I have apps on. But uh, I'm also trying to be conscious of the space on my PlayStation 5. So we'll just do half of them and that'll be added to a list. Hopefully it'll be in the back. So you're not signed in. Connect to PlayStation Network using this feature. That's interesting. So I thought I was signed in. All right. So I am signed in because that is my actual uh, avatar up there. So as I dive into my profile here. It shows, uh, it's walking me through the new style here of the, of what you can expect on the PlayStation 5. So, uh, the online status, busy with a game or TV show, I can change my status, got that. 
Uh, profile. Let's see what we got here. Overview games. Everything's very snappy on this, as you would expect. Let's see what else we have here. Trophies. Jumps right into the trophies very quick. I played Until Dawn Rush of Blood on Halloween. So that was my most recent game that I played. So, let's see what else. Anything here? Switch user, log out. Okay. So, everything's very snappy. Alright, we have the apps here. YouTube, Netflix. Let's launch YouTube real quick here. Alright. Alright. So everything seems very snappy, as, again, you should expect from the brand new console here. Uh, to dump out of this, I'm going to press the PlayStation button. Okay, so I'm in an app. This will be a good thing to learn here. So when you're in an app or a game, you press the PlayStation button and you have this little mini menu down here. You can go to the home, you can go back to YouTube. Uh, you have notifications here. Uh, see what your friends are up to, join voice chats and play games with them in parties. Got it. Uh, music, sound, mic, accessories, and you can turn the console off. So that was with a one button press. Let's see if what happens when I do a long press. Okay, a long press will bring you, bring you right back out to the menu. Uh, a short, just quick press will bring up this small menu down here. So let's see what I have on notifications here. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see what we've got on game base here. music, link to Spotify, not really a Spotify guy, so uh, I'm not going to mess with that. Let's see what Bug Snacks is here. Okay, so you definitely need Spotify to take advantage of that. Um, yeah, not my, my thing right now. Let's see what we have for sound. Okay, so you can go straight to some of your... Uh, important uh, settings straight from this little menu here. You can adjust the microphone, mute, adjust mic level. This PlayStation 5 is very cool so far. So that's the microphone on the DualSense controller and that's what it's picking up. Let's dump out of this, go back into the Quick menu, accessories, wireless controller, about uh, two-thirds charged, which is good. And if we go into the power settings, we can enter rest mode, turn off the PlayStation 5, or restart the PlayStation 5. So I think I'm up to speed on everything. I'm up to date with the, um, you know, with the updates on here. Let's go back here and just see what we've got for customize. So customize would be... I believe this button over here to the right of the touchpad. So, all right, great. So you can customize all of those little things on the quick menu. So the other things available, let's see, accessibility, broadcast, network, sound, mic. So the things that are not selected are network, accessibility, and broadcast and uh, the other things you can't change, apparently. All right, so the VR headset, it seems like uh, the VR headset is on there. Um, I would imagine that would be a selection if I had it set up. So, okay. I think the only thing I would maybe remove is the music because I'm not, uh, if it requires Spotify, I'm not gonna be using it. But uh, at this time, I'll just leave it as is. So let's go into, let's see what we got here. It looks a little different now up here. So we have all apps. So I'm in the media section, that's why. So you have, um, let's see, we have all apps. Then we have TV and video, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, and app library. Okay, so let's go to all apps here and see what's available. Uh, PlayStation video and music, 
think that's Spotify, Apple TV, Crunchyroll, I believe that's Crunchyroll. So you can see here what the selections are. You got Plex on here, Pluto TV, Tubi, Twitch, and uh, VR and experience apps. So this is interesting. I will be trying this out because that's one of the things I definitely want to do is try the VR headset on, uh, on the PlayStation 5 as soon as possible because that's uh, one of the games actually has a uh, PlayStation 5 update, which I want to try out. Uh, that'll be the first thing I do after I play Astro's Playroom. So um, let's go into games up here and see what's different here. So you have the PlayStation Store, uh, you have Explore, obviously Astro's Playroom, PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, Media Gallery, Share Factory, Remote Play. So you can use the PlayStation 5 to connect to another PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4. I don't really know if I'd ever use that, but it's a nice feature. And then the game library. Let's just see Death Stranding here. New product. I've already finished this game. So you have trending videos. Progress. Interesting. So let me go into my progress here. All right, so interesting. It shows uh, all my trophies, basically, from the game. All right, it's going to take some getting used to. Um, but the one last thing I would like to do before I end this video would be to go into the PlayStation Store. So it says view ratings, health, pri privacy, terms in the more options menu. So every time I go into something, it's uh, telling me a tip because it's the first time I've done it. So let's see, welcome to the next generation. So the one thing I've heard about this is that uh, the PlayStation Store is much more integrated. So it's not uh, something that you have to wait for. It just pops right up onto the home screen here. Uh, thus far, I really uh, am impressed with the uh, refinements that have been made to the uh, experience and uh, how snappy everything is. So uh, let's see, must see, and then what's hot, coming soon. Deathloop, I'm gonna be playing that. Returnal, I definitely wanna play that. Uh, Ghostwire, I'd like to play that. Resident Evil Village, definitely gonna play that. Project Athea, I wanna play that. Pragmata, looks good. Hitman 3, probably will play it. Stray, want to try that one out. The one game that I really was looking forward to playing and I was hoping it would be my first PlayStation 5 experience was Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Uh, but it's uh, not, uh, I don't, I don't, you don't hear much about it anymore, so it's probably uh, gonna be delayed. So even though they never really gave an exact uh, release date on that. So let's see what we got here. So it's expanding my games. It knows what I've played, obviously. Uh, see more PlayStation 5 games, PlayStation 4 games. Then you have uh, free to play and VR. So I think I have a good idea of what's going on here on the PlayStation 5 thus far. And uh, I'm very impressed. And I'm anxious to play some games on here because that's really what it's all about. Uh, that and, of course, it's going to be my uh, 4K Blu-ray player of choice, even though I do have the uh, Xbox Series, not Xbox Series, I always want to say that now, ever since the series came out, I have an Xbox One S that uh, I can play Blu-rays on as well, even though that's not uh, a common thing, because mostly I stream these days. But I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm going to have quite a few more follow-up videos, so stay tuned to this channel if you're interested. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out this channel, you can give me a thumbs up. You can share this video on your favorite social media, or you can actually join my Patreon, all of which is greatly appreciated. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.